we call upon Brihaspati Jupiter, Lord of Jyotish, to be with us today for this video to inspire us in order to inspire you. Welcome, my name is Nina Ashby, and I'm here to present alongside with my colleague, Israel Jose, uh, the next video in this series on Jyotish. And Israel is an amazing guy, and I'd like him to say a little bit about your involvement with Jyotish. Uh, well, I've been a long uh, student uh, and practitioner also of Jyotish. Um, it's something that I'm constantly learning. There's so much uh, information and richness and wealth of knowledge that is embedded within the uh, Jyotish uh, uh, subject. Uh, so it's something that I'm always constantly uh, visiting and studying and, and putting it also into practice. Perfect person to <laughs> sit and chat with about a, a fantastic part of Vedic astrology today, which is all about cosmology, cosmology which is definitely. gods yeah. and their relationship to the planets and the yeah. houses yeah. and why they're so important. And it's really basic knowledge, isn't Most it? Definitely. Because it's at the, at the core of how an astrologer would um, understand the chart yes. and the energy of the chart. Yes. So in Vedic cosmology, uh, we have the seed or the unity of consciousness, which is called Brahman. And this is not to be confused by the tri Trimurti, or three gods, which generate from this single unity of consciousness. And these three gods also have consorts, or feminine aspects, mm -hmm. to them. And each of these represents the energy of certain planets. So what we're going to do is go over these and uh, we're going to talk about the gods Brahma, which is, who is the creator energy, and Vishnu, who is the sustainer energy, and Shiva, who is the destroyer energy. And all three of these energies, or primary substances, are responsible for all of life itself mm -hmm. and they are symbolic of life itself and everything from creation and the cycle of lives to the maintaining of life. Would you like to talk a little bit about the god Brahma, huh. the creator god and his uh, consort Sarasvati? Yes, uh, well what, what, cause, uh, just to touch on uh, uh, the, the, the Brahman concept, uh, the ancients were, uh, you know, uh, their their attempt their ideology was uh, basically to uh, to show in terms of that we speak about the the one consciousness and everything coming from a particular source and it's even similar to what even science also uh, talks about when they speak about the big bang coming from this oneness and they're describing the the, the breakdown the different levels of how energy comes from a, a, a oneness and and starts uh, coming down into particular levels and and each of the deities or the gods that are attributed to these particular levels. So they're describing the energy, the, the universal forces, as they sort of like uh, separate. Uh, they speak about the, the universe expanding and contracting also as well. So they're speaking about obviously when it's expanding, they, they expand into these various different forces of, of nature, uh, which is essentially embedded inside of us. And again, as we're going along, we're gonna be seeing how it transpires in the in the birth chart, in the in the, in the natal chart. The Vedas, as a text, were so ancient; yes. they are thousands and thousands yeah. of years old, and they were not written by humans. Yes. They were transmissions, mm. and in these transmissions, in the books of the Veda, mm. it is really, as you say, yeah. an explanation of what we now know as physics, yes. particle yeah. physics. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know. This is all such amazing rich stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I think the thing is with uh, things like the Vedas and science, we're, we're both talking about the same things. Mm -hmm. We're just using different words as well. So it may seem like there's conflict, but actually there's not. We're all trying to actually reach and understand that, that same essence mm. of, of the universe. Yeah, so, yeah cool. Yeah. 
So we start with Brahma, who's yes. the creator, the creator. God, yeah. and his consort Sarasvati. Yeah. And their energies are all about creativity, yes, um, fertility, yes, yes. and they the creating energy is an initiating kind yeah, of energy. Yeah. So it relates very much to the signs of the zodiac mm -hmm. that are what are called cardinal the signs at the yes. beginning of a season. Yes. So that in energy initiates itself, yes. like Aries mm -hmm. or Capricorn yes. or Cancer uh, yes, and Libra. And Libra. Libra yes. Uh, and uh, the, the Brahma or the initiating signs, again, there's something quite unique and special about them because they seem to kind of create or they begin their journey out of nothing. You know, they, they just sort of like emerge onto the scene. So uh, quite well, you know, there, there's a natural creative uh, force uh, that is embedded in all of the uh, all of these signs. The principles uh, of the energy as they move through the chart or move into creation are the planets, which in Vedic astrology are called graha, and the houses where the activity takes place is called bhava, and the signs are called rashi. So we were talking about the rashi connected to cardinal, which is chara rashi, yes, right. which is related to brahma. Yes and those initiating energy. So why don't you and, and, talk and a little bit more about that? Yeah, the, initiate, the, the initiating energies, the, 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 they are sort of like self-mythologizing. It's, it's sort of like something coming out of nothing. Uh, so they start, they begin, they bring something into ex existence, they are manifesting something. It's the start, uh, uh, everything has a, has a beginning. Well, the, so, uh, the Chara Rashi is also are equated or they correspond with the beginning of the seasons. So Aries, um, which is known as Mesha, um, it corresponds with the uh, spring season. Uh, and then we have uh, Cancer, which corresponds with the summer season. Uh, and then we have Libra, which corresponds with the autumn. And then we have uh, Capricorn, which also corresponds with the winter. These are all the beginning, especially for us in the northern hemisphere. These are the, the beginning of, of, of you know the, the, the seasons. They they they're initiating. They're bringing in new seasons. Very often uh, make very good leaders. Uh, you know the ability to lead, to begin something, to initiate something, perhaps maybe to invent something or to start something up. Very often you will find these signs quite strong. Uh, uh, you know in their in, in their Rashi chart also too. So they have that 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 Brahma. Uh, 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 you know cre the, the creativity. We're looking at uh, Saraswati, um, who is the goddess of wisdom, uh, music, uh, music, sound. Again, uh, the, the Vedas speak about um, you know in the beginning, uh, the you know sound, uh, the sound Om, uh, which is again connected and uh, uh, you know in with the, the the music. We can see why she's obviously the goddess of music because sound is very very important. It's one of the first things. Uh, again, going back to science, for example, they speak about the Big Bang. If you're talking about a bang, we're talking about a sound so, here. And sound, of course, all our thoughts are silent sound. Most definitely. And everything to do, that, everything that happens in creation starts yes. as a thought. For, yes. Thought starts as a thought in the mind of God, right. of Brahman, yes. and then comes down through Brahma and mm. Sraswati, the masculine and feminine counterparts yes. of that creative drive Most and creative definitely. energy yes. and interestingly enough the instrument of Saraswati is the Veena yes. which is the drone instrument Men's, which is yes, really yes. beautiful it has yes. this kind of ohm sound Most that definitely. underlies all of the raga music yes. within yes. Indian and culture. also when we think about music as well a, a word that is also very important with music which uh, Saraswati also has is rhythm uh, because everything is rhythm and when we're speaking about cosmology, astrology, we're talking about the planets, uh, you know, science, everything being in rhythm, this, this sort of like a flow to the universe also as well. So that rhythm is, is it's musical, you know, every music, uh, you know, if you listen to it, you have a particular favorite artist, for example, you know, that they will play particular instruments and sing songs that are in rhythm, they have to be in tune with one another. So that's that Saraswati energy, you know, to ha be able to have that music, which is all part of the Brahma, that creativity energy also as well. Yeah. So just to, for a little bit of 
Vedic review. Yes. So the sign of Aries is Mesha, okay. and the sign of Cancer is Karkata, and the sign of Libra is Tula, Tula. and the sign of Capricorn is Makar. Yes. And all of those are under the Chara Rashi, or mm. the plan, uh, the um, the sign right. relating yeah. to yeah. the the beginning, cardinal signs, the, the beginning initiating yeah. energy. Yeah. The kind of the earthly, what is manifest within the yes. in the earth. And we look at the um, the Chararashi, mm. the energy moves out and then it has to become physicalized oh, yes. in some yes. kind yes. of yes. way. Yeah. And um, so that sustaining energy has to do with the movement of life force through all of creation. Yes. Right? Okay. So we talked about cycles, and yes. then these cycles are then manifested yes. mm. through that. Yes. This is called Visva Bhava yes. Rashi, yes, and it relates to dual signs. Mm. So um, the dual signs often have two energies connected mm. to them. Yes. And so why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So the uh, dual signs, uh, as it is, when we speak about dual, we're speaking about two. Uh, you know, the, you know, the, they have that duality, the double. Uh, when we look at uh, a, a Gemini, the twins, for example, and we see that double, or Pisces with the two fish, also as well. So there's something dual orientated about it, and they, 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 they you know, they maintain because they they're jumping from one thing to another. So by doing that, they are sustaining, which is what that Vishnu energy essentially is about. We spoke about the Brahma, which is the creativity creative energy, the initiating energy, well that initiating energy now gets passed on or crosses over to Vishnu who now takes that energy and now sustains it and it sustains it with the dual signs by bouncing one with the other. So you have the, the you know, it's sort of like maybe like a game of tennis maybe you could think of that is, you know, one's bouncing against the other which is that's what keeps the match going. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you know, a, a tennis player can't play by himself or herself. They need the two in order to be able to keep the game going. So that is the, the, the Vishnu energy and also we have the Lachmi is also... Prosperity, yes. wealth, yes. but it's also right. about kind of the home and the maintaining of the home and Most the family definitely. and... Yes. and and right. and how abundance and prosperity and money and all yes. the things that are that make life yes. um, kind of grounded yeah. in reality and keep us moving yeah. on it from a day on a daily yes. basis, basis yeah. you know. And when we think about money, uh, just going even to uh, to latch me there, when we think about wealth, uh, which is connected with money and resources and things of that nature, uh, one of the words. Uh, in in Western terms, which is used for money, is currency. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, currency is something again that it maintains. It, it has to keep on going. There's a consistency there. Uh, it, it you know it sustains us. Mm -hmm. You know uh, you know so it, it, it keeps flowing. Like, it, it, it's keeps a current. Flow. It's a current. It has to keep on flowing, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it keeps on back and forth. Uh, you know we may talk about the stock markets and so on as it goes up and down, but there is a constant flow as we you, you know we can see. So again, the, that. Um, the Rashi, which yes. are Gemini or Mituna, oh, yes. and Virgo, which is Kanya, Kanya, and Sagittarius, Danu, and Pisces is Mean. Yeah. So obviously, you know, this is popping up on the screen to give you a, a thought, some thoughts about, you know, yeah. a, a reference to it. But these Rashi are very, very important because this is about how energy keeps flowing as it manifests down through the planes. So now we finally come to the the third level of manifestation of energy. We've come from initiating energy, chara rashi, to um, sustaining energy, dvisva bhava rashi, to now we come to stira rashi. And stira rashi are the fixed signs and that are relate to the god Shiva and the goddess Parvati. So Shiva and Parvati are the destroyer god and goddesses. So everything that has come into creation and been maintained at some point needs to break down and become neutralized in order to re be recycled again. And the reason that these destroyer gods and goddesses are so important and that they're relating to the fixed signs, which seems a bit odd, but the... The fixed signs want to stay fixed. They want to stay where they are. So, for example, um, Scorpio or Vrishchik, 
Rashi. Uh, uh, sorry, Vrishtik Rashi. Um, it's fixed water. It's like the lake. Nothing is flowing in. Nothing's flowing out. It can only go down deep. And they just want to keep everything within themselves emotionally until they explode or or the dam bursts and. That's when Shiva comes and bursts the dam, or Parvati comes and bursts the dam, it can't remain the same because everything needs to keep flowing in the universe. So Shiva and Parvati are very important. And in helping consciousness and transformation to take place, um, there are, for example, in a forest fire, some plants. So you think, oh, it's so horrible, the trees of the forest is burned yeah, down. Right. But some plants only germinate yeah. with very high heat. And yeah. then they, that's how they survive and that's how they maintain themselves. So everything has its cycle and the destruction is very much part of the cycle. But it's not something that people tend to like very much. Yeah. It's the difficult or the darker side of people's yeah. charts. And that's why it's very interesting to look at Stira Rashi yes. and the energy yes. that Shiva and Parvati bring, as well as the other gods and goddesses' and says, aspects. Definitely. Yeah, because uh, uh, there's something about uh, 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 with the Stira Rashis is that they, uh, because of their fixed nature, it 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 brings that part of ourselves, the part where the ego mm. uh, doesn't you know holds on and it wants to stay fixed. And like you stated before, you know, everything has a cycle. It has a beginning where we talk about Brahma. It's been sustained by the Vishnu energy. And then uh, Shiva and Parvati also have to then come and now bring an end to it. They have to destroy that. So the destruction is really the part of ourselves, the part of the, our, our ego, which is hanging on and doesn't want to let go, perhaps maybe because of certain fears. Uh, and that's what, you know, it's, it's that part of our ego that must be destroyed. Uh, and, and again, uh, recycled again. And the renewal, there's always a renewal. Just like the sun rises every day, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a new day. But with a, sun, with, a, with a sunrise, we, we must also have a sunset also as well. So the Shiva energy is equated with that uh, sunset. Uh, and also, uh, Pavarti, for example, if, if the part of our ego that, that doesn't want to let go uh, you know, having battles with that, then, um, you know, d deities like Durga or Kali can also be evoked from that. Uh, Kali, as we know, she's the deity, she's got skulls, she dwells in the graveyard, so she's to do with uh, death, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't always have to be a physical death, although that is one manifestation of it. However, it's a death of uh, part of the ego, that things that we need to let go of. You see, so all of those signs, the stira rashis, are all showing us uh, and teaching us parts of ourselves that we need to let go of and we need to transform in some way, shape or form. Yeah. So even though it's uh, often, as I said, part of the darker side of yes. who we are yes. and relates to the fears that we yes. have within yes. us that hold us back and yes. keep us kind of rabbit in the headlights, yes. yeah. there's the, the positive nature is that the, all of the stira rashi are about concentrated intensity of energy and in order to achieve things yes. you need to have that a, a fixed quality oh. something that's going to dig deep or dive deep yeah. and what happens is that that fixed nature makes them very reliable in yes. a lot of yeah, ways they definitely. don't like things to change yeah. but at the same time they can get a, a tremendous most, amount yeah, yeah, done. Most definitely. And it also gives a, a tremendous amount of loyalty uh, and, you know, that ability to be dependable on and reliable also as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a great energy to have. Uh, and it's all about how we, uh, you know, our, our, our dharma, our path, uh, how we choose to utilize that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because it can work against the, us. The uh, Rashi or signs mm. that relate to the Stira uh, Rashi are uh, Taurus, which is Risha, and Leo, which is Simha, Simha. and Scorpio, Vrishchik, Vrishchik, and Aquarius, which is Kumba. Mm. And um, so all of these signs are very focused, concentrated. They like a lot of attention, too, I think. 
Definitely. Yeah. A lot of attention around them and they are to do with change. And this is why, uh, again, when we get, start getting more into the graha and the nature of the grahas, uh, uh, you know, uh, grahas like, uh, you know, Rahu, for example, uh, which in, in Western terms we refer to as the North Node, the, 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 one of the nodes of the moon, uh, uh, is, is, is very much comfortable in, that, in one of these particular signs, especially Kumba, which is Aquarius. So uh, when we're going through particular uh, transitions uh, that, that are related or connected with Rahu, they are very transformative. It's a time where we may have to do a lot of shedding and, and letting go, but also we need that fixity uh, that stability also to be able to uh, it allows to be able to penetrate mm -hmm. and and be able to see ourselves through those particular times. Transpires in the natal chart in the Rashi chart um, is that it's showing us how each of the gods and goddesses in their own right uh, manifest in our Rashi chart and how they can be utilized and how we can better understand their energy and their qualities also uh, as the well. Brahma we're speaking about the initiating energies and we're speaking about the Vishnu which is the sustaining energies and the Shiva which is the destruction energies the ending energies where we, we're allowing you to have a glimpse an insight into the nature of each of these uh, uh, Rashi signs into Through the your body. chart embody the gods and goddesses yes. and the energies of the divine within you. So we'd like to thank you very much for joining us in this video and hope that you are inspired.